two, one, action. Hey, what's going on, you guys? Welcome to a lovely, great day. Today, we are going to learn a new lesson. E equals MC squared. Very scientific, created by Albert Einstein. E equals, E is energy, and I don't know the rest. This is going to be a crazy week. Well, now that we officially left North America and we are in the UK, it's time for another of those UMA swag bag giveaways. If you don't know about our giveaways, every time we go to a country, we collect a bunch of trinkets and put it together in a bag. And when we leave, we send it to one of you. So this time we have two bags, one for our time in the US and one for our time in Canada. So if you want a chance to win one of those bags, it's simple. All you have to do is subscribe to this channel and then head to the link below to follow the rest of the step. And that's it. And I am sure the entire time I was talking, all you could think about is, wow, what's the jacket kick is wearing and how can I get one? Just so you know, it's not a style. There's a reason I'm wearing this. And if you remember a while ago, we announced that we were going to be at the South Anthem Boat Show. When the boat show organizers heard that we were crossing the Atlantic and heading over in this area, they invited us to not only be here again this year, but they wanted Uma to be the superstar of the show. So here we are at the South Anthem International Boat Show. <laughs> I still haven't explained why I'm wearing this thing. <laughs> the cool thing about being at the show and staying on our boat during the days of the show is that we get access to the site before and after hours and we get to see the preparation uh, for the event and if you know us you know that we're always into the behind the scenes stuff but the show only starts in two days and the site is still a construction zone so we do have to wear those stylish bright high-vis vest if we want to wander around. But I don't think we ever thought about how much work is involved into making a show like this happen and let me tell you it's insane I think it's crazy that they put all the boats in and then they build an entire stage like around the contours of all the boats so that you can walk around and like see down inside the boats. It's like, it's just, the amount of effort is just mind blowing and it all happens in such a short amount of time. one of the most interesting aspect is the dock itself because it's the largest temporary dock in the world and it's literally put in just for this show and what's crazy is that they have all the specific layouts of how each boat is going to go in and where each boat is going to be and so they put in all the boats and then they close the docks so everything is locked inside for the remaining of the show that's just mind-blowing and after the show is over everything comes back out The boat is so clean, yet we're <laughs> whipping out the paint. <laughs> yeah, one thing we've noticed at this boat show is that all the fancy boats all have a fancy sign in front of the boat uh -huh. and a fancy floor mat because everybody needs to take their shoes off to get on the boat. So uh, we called BNG today and they're giving us a mat and we are making our own uh, display 
Um, <laughs> Get Owen in there. <laughs> Dan found this like piece of plywood that we had in one of the lockers. This piece of plywood <laughs> is what our autopilot ram came on. Is and it we've really? been saving it. This is some bilge paint. We got the guy, up, Matt, up at the office, printed out and laminated some pictures for us. So now people are going to know that it's like a Pearson 36 and kind of a little bit about who we are and, and pictures of the inside of the boat. Yeah. Because we're not really on the boat all day. And when we're not on the boat, people can kind of still see, at least answer the question, like, why are boats here? But we, I think we have an addiction. <laughs> like, we literally this morning just finished, like, vacuuming up and cleaning everything and as soon as the last people left our boat this afternoon, we're like, we're, ooh, project! <laughs> we're whipping out the boat paint yeah, yeah. and doing a boat project. I think, yeah. Guys, I think, I think we had a, I think we have a problem. We need t-shirts that say, I said no to boat projects, but they just didn't listen. Like, <laughs> you know, it doesn't have to be perfect. It only has to last for a couple of days. <laughs> I think oh it's funny. Goodness. We have a problem, guys. This is like a legitimate addiction, I think. Good morning everyone. It is the first day of the South Anthem Boat Show. Uma is clean and ready and it's going to be an interesting, fun 10 days. We even have a flag up. <laughs> and oh, our sign is also finished. So, I'm excited. It's going to be fun. Okay, day one is done. <laughs> the show is closing in a few minutes and so we're just waiting for a few of our Umanians to show up because we are taking them out for a sunset sail. It's a beautiful day. It's sunny, so it's gonna be fun. That goes down and back, or yeah. that one goes down and slowly drifting. <laughs> Welcome to Saturday at the Southampton International Boat Show. Powered by Borrower Boat. Boat. Wow, you guys, how was it? It's been a lot of fun to meet so many people in such a short amount of time. Yes. And uh, have everyone come see the boat after we cross the Atlantic. So it's been it's been great and the weather's been awesome too. Being able to share how we live on a day-to-day -day basis as well has been a big delight. Hello. Hello. I was on, I had the privilege of going on the boat this morning. Not out sailing, unfortunately. We didn't have time, but we did a bit of filming, didn't we? And uh, we've seen the work behind, uh, even just in a flash. We wanted traveling to be a big priority for, from the beginning. And we realized that traveling by sailboat was the most sustainable and the best way for us that we can travel with our home. She was a rescue puppy that we saved from basically the scrapyard. <laughs> I think if we had any sailing experience going into it, we probably never would have done it because we probably would have known better. Um, but we had no plan B. So how long did the refits take then from, from beginning to end? And did you work full time on it? Was it something that you had to put all your energy in? Definitely. We, uh, we often say you either have time or money and we had all the time in the world and we didn't have money. <laughs> 
we just looked at our boat as sort of a problem to solve. And where things worked, we kept it, and where they didn't, we ripped it out and, and did it a different way because some, some things just don't make sense in boats, I think. So from the time that you got it till now, what's the biggest problem that you had to solve? Fixing the keel. <laughs> I remember walking behind the, the lift Googling, like, should sailboat keel swing? And we, we got, like, swing keels. And we're like, no, no, not this way, like, this way. Who watches our videos within... A oh, couple, okay, all right. Oh, wow, wow, look at that. You were awesome. not expecting that, that's so That nice. is so cool. Um, so we have, we have two things that we would like to give away to you guys. If you're familiar with the story, you know about the don't buy a couch phrase. Oh, yeah. Come on, that's it. Good night. That was good. That was quick. Well guys, we are on our way up to the stage to be with Joe again. Uh, it should be a lot of fun. This is the boat that the, the guy called Sir Francis Chichester right. sailed around the world. He was the first person to sail single-handedly around the world. Was it a non-stop thing? Like no, no, he stopped in okay. Sydney. Okay. He was very unhappy with the way the thing was designed. It was built in a hurry. He had two days of sea trials here, here-ish. <laughs> two days? And then he went around the world. Just winged it. <laughs> yeah. And his aim was to, um, was to beat the clippers, the tea clippers, okay. uh, to Australia. And he didn't quite do it, but he came bloody close. How, how, what's the length of the boat? It's about 55 feet and about 44 feet waterline. Okay, wow. Gear gears come a long way. We have a Cape Horn on our boat and it is like the most magnificent piece of gear that has ever been designed for a boat. Uh, it's a pretty interesting layout. I definitely don't hate it. It has very sort of compartmentalized utilities. Like this is where you sit, this is where you nap, this is where you cook. Bit of a pilot berth in there. I'm sure there's good sail lockers. It's very small for a 55 foot boat, I think he said. It's all wood. Is it all wood? It's all wood. I thought it was going to be GRP, but yeah, all wood. These pilot berths look uh, very secure. <laughs> You're not slipping out of those anytime oh soon. Oh my, yeah, look at that. It's deep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's a double hinge door. It hinges and then it hinges out of the way again. And then the hinge. Oh, it's, there's a lot of little clever things on this boat. The crazy part about this boat is that there's a lot of stuff out on deck that sort of solves a problem and we're used to kind of seeing those problems solved on sort of race boats with like hydraulic backstays or um, some of those race controls that we don't have on our boat but we've seen you know adjustable backstays and stuff but on this boat everything was sort of a prototype and so outside on deck there's some really weird stuff that solves a problem in a very weird way. Yeah, because it's back from in the 1960s, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They they were just they were just trying it, I guess. This boat can sleep one, two, three, four, five, six, seven people, and the guy solo soloed it around the world. She <laughs> brought some friends, man. <laughs> right. Nice to meet you. Are you ready to see something a little different? Yes, I hope so. It's like solving all the same problems, but 50 years later. <laughs> Yeah. The kit is 45. Um, she has been working. She's wanted to do a Vendée Globe since she was 16. Wow, that's a, that's a good dream to have. And she's been a professional racer for the last 25 years. Um, she's raced on all sorts of shapes, sizes, and and what she did was she realised that doors weren't, you know, doors don't just open. Right. So she realised she'd got to open them for herself. So. She started off doing different races, building up, building up, right, I can do that one. Mm -hmm. So she's actually now knows that she's ready to do the Vendée Globe next Very year. Cool. 
Yeah. And the Vendée Globe, it's non-stop around the world, yeah. right? It is, yeah, non-stop, single-handed, non-assisted. Um, her sleep pattern will be, she's found this over the years, so every sailor will probably be slightly different, um, but her ult optimum sleep pattern is 30 minutes. So she's going to deep sleep for 30 minutes, and then when she wakes up, she feels refreshed. Have your own boat? Yeah, yes. It's here at the show. Actually. It's actually, yeah, it's, well, it's on the other corner. Oh, fantastic. And, and you're sailing it, you're going around the world? Yeah. I like to say we're coastal cruising around the world. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't think of a better way to do it. Yeah. Yeah, well, look at that. That's so cool. When you're sleeping for 30 minutes at a time, it's probably just on that beanbag. It's very different, right? Like, this is a boat that's meant to, you know, solo sail around the world. Like, you don't have, you don't need eight people. Uh, eight quarters for crew like the Volvo Ocean Race. You want to do it? <laughs> no. Ten more years, no. you could be, you could be on it. That's, Kika. that's rough, man. Yeah. No, it's not my dream to solo sail around the world. <laughs> this is actually something we thought about doing on our lifelines, having a Dyneema vertical piece as well, because on the foredeck, if the sail's coming down, it helps keep it from blowing over. Uh, it's nice to see him do it on a on a Vendée Globe too. Bottom of the lifeline is all Dyneema. Yeah, Dyneema is the best. They put some chafe protection on where it goes through the lifeline, though. We might do the same thing actually. It's super cool that they have Gypsy Moth and this boat right across from each other because technically they're solving all the same issues because they are both being solo circumnavigated around the world. It's just this one has a lot more modern technology and a lot more modern material and they were able to sort of design it in a computer and with a lot more sea trialing. So it's very interesting to see all the same solution, like all the same issues being solved in a different way. We are off for another day out sailing and today we have Lauren from Timo. Hello. And our patrons Paul and Kelvin. Hi. And by the way, it's Paul's birthday today, so it's gonna be <laughs> it's his birthday this month. That'll do. <laughs> so it's gonna be a, a beautiful sunset birthday sail. <laughs> We are demonstrating our motor since there's absolutely no wind. <laughs> what do you think, Dan? Sunset's still beautiful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a beautiful That's sunset. It's very shiny. This was a busy week. <laughs> I'm exhausted. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> I'm so tired. <sighs> it was fun though. Did you yeah, have fun? it was a lot of fun. It was really cool to be able to show our boat and show all the work and all the love that we put into her. Yeah, and have so many people come to visit. Like, there's yeah. no way we'd ever get that many people visiting the boat on like a normal, in a normal month. I mean, we'd be, we, yeah. There's just no <laughs> way. I think in the past ten days. We've had maybe 600 people I think show we counted up. counted over 500 people that came to visit our boat. But I think what was the funniest too is that there's some people on the fancy boat that were across mm. from us <laughs> and they kept looking over and they were asking themselves, why are so many people interested in this old 50 year old yeah. tiny sailboat? Our boat was like sort of the quote unquote ugly duckling, right? Like there wasn't. We were surrounded by all these new fancy boats, and then there's our boat, which obviously isn't a new fancy boat. And so, like, either somebody kind of would knew of Uma and would kind of stop to look at the boat, or if someone didn't know, they'd stop and kind of read our sign. Mm -hmm. And then a couple of more people would stop and look, and then the other people, I think, were just stopping to look at the people stopping, trying to <laughs> wonder, like, what's so great about this boat? <laughs> like, everyone that walked by would just only be looking over towards our boat and not over towards the other boats, which was really funny. It was also cool that we were able to 
every single day we went mm. out to sunset sales yeah, with our that was, patrons that was really nice and it was a really good way to refresh mentally after mm -hmm. a busy day yeah and the sunsets were beautiful and we then, got oh, so yeah. lucky with the weather yeah, we did. it was only one day that was like a little bit overcast and kind of rainy um and we still went out for a sale we went out for yeah. a sale every single day and it was also a good way to connect um with our patrons on, mm -hmm. on a more personal level it was amazing we were just hanging out with our umination or family and i personally think the best part of the show is how much kids loved Uma. <laughs> <laughs> Uma was the playground oh of the entire gosh. show. That was so much fun. There were so many kids on board. <laughs> I think the parents, I think every parent who came to the show with their kids was happy when they got on our boat because mm -hmm. we gave them like a piece of chalk and ice cream. You know, they couldn't break our boat. There's no yeah. damage you can do to, to our boat. And so the kids would just go nuts and like straw over the chalkboard and... <laughs> So in terms yeah, of it is. price range, as in like, we're gonna get on YouTube. Is this good? Is this close enough? Three, days, two, yeah. one, uh, action! Diana Here's going on, you guys. Welcome to a lovely, great day. Also, day I've got the new the merchandise. Baby shark, do 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 do. Baby shark, do. It's the end. Do 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 It's the end. Do 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 It's the end. Do 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 It's the end. Make sure to subscribe! Turn it up the right way. Like, okay, sorry. <laughs> Make sure to subscribe! <laughs> Thank you for watching this video. Be sure to leave a like to try and get Mr. Shark more educated. Cheers! <laughs> Cheers! <laughs> okay, let, okay, cut, 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 cut.